couple more things I want to get through with you. And the next is inserting scenes to create loops. Okay. So if you look down over here, you'll see that I have this one track called Portray. Okay. Portray My Heart. And below that, I have Portray My Heart again, just the color is a little bit different. And it says loop, all caps. Okay. That's to let me know that I actually have a loop here. So I created a copy of this. But how did I create this copy? The cool thing is in Ableton is that it's really easy to create carbon copies by holding down the option key and then just clicking and dragging down. But what I did with this Betray My Heart track is I said, look, I don't necessarily want to play the, the entire track all the way to the end, for, especially for demonstration purposes. I But I created a section of it where I just made a eight bar loop. So if I wanted to start playing the next track with this track, what I could do is hit play on this song. And then when I'm ready, okay, I can quickly just hit this loop right here and then jump into it. And no matter what, until I hit stop, it will just keep looping, okay? So that was kind of, you know, something that you might have not realized earlier when I was demonstrating that this was just a loop, but now that you can see it here, so that allows me to start playing the next track Okay. And mix them together. And, and I can decide when that loop's gonna end just by using the crossfader to go to deck A. Okay, so creating loops, creating custom loops is a great way to maybe extend your ideas a little bit further. This is where you can start getting a little bit more creative, but also making your own custom phrases. So sometimes if you find a song that is not very DJ friendly, what do I mean by DJ friendly? It, the intro is only one bar long for whatever reason and goes right into a vocal um, or maybe it's only two bars long or maybe there's no intro at all and you want to be able to blend it in with the next song and not have these vocals overlapping have any sort of key clashing maybe you could find a section where it's just the breakdown or the instrumental part sometimes i will take the outro of one song and replace it with its intro just for DJing purposes, I can I loop these tracks better together. So having custom loops like that um, can be very beneficial, but also going back to my original statement about inserting uh, scenes. Now, when you look over here, you can you when you look at scenes, you can actually play more than one track at a time, which is great. But when it comes to doing things like these follow actions that I set up earlier. I don't want them to reflect what's happening with these other tracks here. So I created empty scenes so they won't, I, for, for just for organization purposes, I can uh, tell the difference between uh, what these loops are for and they are attached to this cream uh, uh, vocal, or sorry, this audio stem versus these tracks. And how you can insert scenes is just by hitting Command I, okay? Command I will allow you to insert scenes so you can actually create space between the tracks. And again, the reason why I did that, especially for these follow actions here, if I just hit play on this song, okay, you can see that, okay, just create these quick little glitches. Okay, this is now, you know, taking it a step, a step further, but follow actions are really fun. And I'll show you what's going on under the hood here. So this loop here, I literally just grabbed one segment. Okay. And then and then on this one, I you can see I said loop plus 12. I transpose it up 12 semitones. And then on this one, it says loop rev because I actually uh, reversed it so it played backwards and it's playing towards the end of the track. So the other thing that's really important is about keeping in time. You know, again, this is if this was an in-person class, if you were here. Uh, we we spend a whole day just going over follow actions and especially with Ableton Live, there's some really cool new features or Ableton Live 11, I mean, 
Um, and if you're still in 10, that's fine too, because there's still quite a bit you can do with follow actions. But with follow actions, I can do these kind of fun, glitchy little patterns like this. And that's what you're hearing. It's just the cream original track, but then modulated um, and, and, and tweaked a little bit to make this fun, fun little glitch pattern. Okay. And again, so that's, you know, something just really fun to do, kind of like remixing on the fly. Um, so really the only limitation is your imagination. Um, there is so much you can do. Uh, like this is me, I'm just literally, you know, briefly breaking the surface here when it comes to um, chopping up the same loop with the same song, but imagine mixing, ma mixing and matching other samples, you know, maybe some of your own musical works with other musical works, combining these things, it, it can be super fun, super, super fun. This is why I love DJing in Ableton as well, um, along with producing, obviously, well, not obviously, but of of course, you know, I love I love producing in Ableton too.